Have you experienced that there are people who they don't understand that it's these lessons that happen for us, not to us, that while they are tough, you have anger, you have sadness, you have grief, you have to process the forgiveness for each one of these events. But they think that life is just supposed to be easy and you don't have to do this work to grow. What do you say to that? Well, I draw upon the, the experiences I see with others. I have a gentleman that was a very successful businessman. He was jogging along the side of the road. He was hit by a car. He was brain damaged. Uh, he had some awful, awful injuries. And he was able to pull through it as a patient of mine. Still get back ultimately to his life. And he says, you know, sometimes life sucks. And life isn't fair. It's good, but sometimes it isn't fair. Is it what you agreed to before you came down here as a method to learn a lesson? Like, you know, so, you know, I was over medicated for two decades, right? Misdiagnosed. I could say it wasn't fear or I can reframe it and say, thank you. Because I know very well what to do, what not to do. And I help others make informed choices about what they're doing. Uh -huh. You chose how to look at that, didn't you? Out of all the op possible options, some people I think don't understand that there's options to how you think about something. And so just that alone can widen the field of what are my options. And it's not just what do I think my options are? You know, what are the possible options? I saw this interaction I had with the surgeon. I saw that uh, if I would have taken that, I would have a different life right now. You know, so I, I made myself look at, you know, what is the range of possible options? I was lucky enough being a chiropractor. I, I know, you know, alternatives and po other possibilities and things like that. Sometimes people don't have the, the benefit of that. And so they have to do some searching on their own, maybe find some people that have been a certain in a similar circumstance that have pulled through, that have gone through. There's uh, people that have severe scoliosis that I treat, okay? And so a couple of them in the beginning, it's like, well, it was me. I have this, now I'm due. But there's a lady out here, I can't remember her name. I'll share it with you. She has a severe scoliosis and she has a website that talks about all of the possibilities of people with scoliosis that could do to enjoy life and be physical and happy in life, not just be crippled. And therefore she's not, all right? Well, I mean, people basically said that I was going to take that medication for having a disease that I really didn't have, right? They said I had bipolar disorder and schizo too. And well, you're going to be on these drugs for the rest of your life. So I agreed. I'm like, okay, because I don't want to be a harm to others. That's what they told me. You'll be a harm to others. But as I became older and wiser, and, and keep in mind, my brother was a chiropractor, right? The irony was, is that he got a brain tumor within weeks of me having that misdiagnosis. So he wasn't able to help me and I wasn't able to help him. And so we had to find this path, right? And so the truth truth is, and I think this is what I want people to know, Dr. Scott's way of doing this may not be right for you. Right, right. My way may not be right for you. God may have a plan for you that you know nothing about. There may be something else he's got that's really cool that we're not even aware of yet today. Right. The point is, God always shows you there are many, many ways to heal. You can do it just completely divine intervention if you want to. Mm -hmm. You can see a chiropractor, an acupuncturist. You can blend that with nutrition, oils, PEMF, sound frequency, which you and I both love. There are so many ways, and there are ways that are being invented as we speak mm -hmm. that we don't know about. Right. This reminds me of a book that I, I referenced in Sitting on the Job. My first book that I wrote was written in the 80s, yeah. and it was called Anatomy of an Illness. It was written by Norman Cousins, was a, a journalist, and he had a chronic condition. And according to Norman Cousins, he healed or bettered himself dramatically with laughter, anatomy of an illness. So he would look at all the movies that brought him laughter. And there was a, a change. Now, physiologically, there's a lot of physiologic change that occurs with laughter, especially if you do laughter on a repeated basis, that has a positive health effect, all right? So it makes sense to me that what he said, and according to his own account, this is what helped him the most, that the laughter was what made a huge difference in his chronic condition. Yeah, and I would encourage people to really, I think what, you know, we think about this show, it's about exploring outside your current reality. What you see as reality may not be true.
Mm -hmm. right? It's what you were taught, but not necessarily true. You want to speak to that? It might not be the only thing to look at. There might be other things to look at as well. So turning your gaze to a larger view, still you have to, again, make your own decisions. You have to look at everything from a standpoint of, you know, is it make sense? Is it founded, well founded? And is, I, is it something that I can hook on to and see myself working well with? You know, those things you have to use whatever filters that are important to you in order to evaluate what your options are. But I know that your best option might not be the first one you hear. I know that personally. Yeah, I do too. So I have a story yeah. to share. So now my girlfriend, Linda Stevens, who's very much into brain health, natural health, you know, and everything. When I was disabled, she came to pick me up because I couldn't drive. And we were going to a landmark education meeting. And at that time, I had two torn rotator cuffs. And I'm exploring surgery. And she goes, you actually don't have to have surgery for that. And I looked at her like she was, and this is in my book, and I already know I can, you know, share all this. I told her she was, you know, bat crazy, right? Literally. I'm like, are you out of your mind? Of course you have to have surgery, right? Now, I never had surgery. So you know the end of that story already, right? But even though I was coming off of like being sick and learning about these modalities, I was committed to the old way of doing things. And it got very, God just kept on stepping in, make, giving me these roadblocks, right, to surgery. I looked at using frankincense essential oil. Now, at that time, I don't have all the fun gadgets that I do now, okay? This is 2014. Mm. And I don't have my PEMF. I don't have my BOD. I haven't met BOD yet. And you know Dr. Josh Axe. You know of him, I'm sure. Mm. And I'm reading about gut health. And I'm listening to his videos and I'm listening to his talk about frankincense essential oil. And he says how his mom used frankincense essential oil for her breast cancer. And his mom's alive today. And he goes, and by the way, it has multiple uses because it uh, also is really great for skin imperfections. I went to Hawaii in 1997 or 96, I think it was, shortly after they put me on all the drugs. Now, prior to that, I didn't burn in the sun ever. So I go out to Hawaii and I burned, I mean, like blistered. And I had scars all over my shoulders and my neck. Wow. And I'm using this frankincense. And I was taking it not only topically, but internally, meaning, you know, your success is inside out. And of course, it also puts your brain in a theta state or, you know, meditative state. And so if you are working with the brain, right, to calm it down, it can effectively do what it's supposed to do, which is direct every organ, tissue, and cell to act in your best behalf for your immune system and anything else, your digestive mm -hmm the nervous system. And so I never had surgery. So it's a much different approach. And so my question to the audience is, what is your program belief system about healing and about your body's personal success strategy? You know, that's really a good point because if you can consciously bring that forward, then you can observe it mm -hmm. and see if that's how you want it to be or, or if you want to look for other viable options. Well, because this is according to Jody, everything is a belief system. And so the belief system is either serving you or it's not. And it's driving your success, right? And it's driving how you heal. And it's driving because you've already, your brain's going to tell your body how you're supposed to heal. So what have you programmed your brain to believe, right? And you programmed your brain to believe that there's always another way. 